My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel. Today, I want to show you five tips and ideas for controlling your Apple smart home faster and easier with your Apple devices. And if you stick around for the whole video, I'll also tell you about some things I think you should avoid as a waste of your time. And thanks to Eve for sponsoring this video. More on them in a minute. Now, it's important to remember that the point of a smart home isn't to just control everything from your phone. Physical and voice controls are just as, if not more, important. But your iPhone and iPad have the ultimate flexibility to manage every aspect of your smart home. But that power and flexibility can easily slow you down if it's not organized and curated. My first tip is simple, but an important one, and that is to clean up the favorites in your Apple Home app. When you add a lot of accessories to HomeKit, they want to be added as a favorite. And maybe in the excitement of getting a new device, you go ahead and do that. Favorites appear in the front Home tab in the Home app and the selections sync across your devices. You probably put a lot of care in your iPhone home screen and rearrange all the icons and widgets to be exactly how you want. Once you've removed a lot of the cruft of accessories and scenes you don't need in the main Home tab, go to the house icon at the top and then to the bottom of the menu and select Edit Screen. This will trigger Craig Federighi's favorite jiggle mode. I just go into jiggle mode? You can drag scenes and accessories, arranging them in a way where you can quickly access them and remember later. But what if you want to share your iPad as a home control for the whole family? Well, iPadOS doesn't support multiple users, at least yet. But you can leave your iPad out as a dedicated home control when you're not using it as, well, an iPad. This can also be a great use for an older iPhone or iPad you might have lying around. Now, let me show you how this works, but first, a word from our sponsor. Thanks to Eve for sponsoring this week's video. Eve makes quality products for Apple HomeKit that I use all over my smart home. One of my favorite products from Eve is their Eve Energy. This not only works as a smart plug, but it also serves as a thread router. It strengthens your home's thread network by adding another place to move data between other thread devices in your home. But one of the killer features of the Eve Energy is part of why it has the word energy in the name. It provides energy monitoring, showing you the power consumption from the device plugged into the EVE energy over time. Running certain appliances can drain more power than you might think. If you have an EVE Energy controlling these appliances, you can see nice graphs of the energy consumption inside the EVE app, along with customizable approximations of how much it's costing you. Then you can simply cut the power to these devices when you're not using them, saving you money. For many parts of the world, energy is getting expensive these days, so these small savings can add up quickly. Eve will automatically guess the approximate energy cost for your area, but you can customize that in the app settings. All right, so I'm here on my iPad and I wanna go ahead and enable guided access. Now, this is an accessibility feature, but what it'll do is enable you to lock your iPad to a specific app and then require a passcode to get to the rest of the functionality on your iPad. So I'm gonna go under accessibility settings here. And now when I'm in accessibility settings, I wanna scroll down and find guided access. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And I also wanna use this with the accessibility shortcut. This means that I can triple click the top button or the lock button, depending on your device, or in certain cases, the home button with older Apple devices. And then this will trigger guided access to be enabled. The other thing you can do here is you can change the display auto lock. So when it's in guided access mode, you could set it to never. And this means that it will never lock the screen so it doesn't need your touch ID or passcode to get back into the device if you're just leaving it on the home app all the time in guided access. And then you can also set a passcode for guided access. Now this does not have to be the same as your passcode for the device, but it certainly can be. So now I'm here in the home app and I want to turn on guided access. So I'm going to triple click the top button and that will start guided access. And if you notice now, I cannot go to the home screen. I'm stuck in the home app. Now I can do anything I want in the home app. So you might want to limit this to a particular Apple ID that maybe doesn't have all the home management privileges or just be wary of that that's something you need to trust these other people who are using it with. 
but I have this dedicated HomeKit control that I can use and, and quickly manage whatever's in here. And it's even true with an iPad, if I wanna close the Smart Folio, I can do that and then open it back up and it's still gonna be in guided access mode. And then when I'm ready to leave guided access, I can of course triple click the lock button again. And then I'm gonna enter my passcode here and that will end the guided access session. You'll see it says that on the screen. And of course I can swipe up to the bottom and go back to the home screen. Now, if you want to make that shared view of your home look super nice and be clear about which room is which, Home Paper is a great app to help. You can download it and make a wallpaper for your main home screen and then pay just 99 cents one time to create as many more wallpapers as you want. You can use pictures of your home to make it clear which places the living room and so on. Home Paper does a nice job of taking even the most amateur photos and adding a color gradient around them to make them look super slick. It's also great to use different colors for the home tab and each room of your home so you can quickly get an idea of which screen you're looking at. The one major downside of this is that they don't sync between your devices. Now that's not the fault of Home Paper, that's the Home app. You'll have to go add new pictures on each device manually. But if you have that single shared HomeKit control device, this is perfect. One of the key advantages of using your iPhone or iPad to control your smart home is that you also have shortcuts on the device. This means you can run commands for HomeKit right alongside other commands. If you have a HomeKit compatible TV and an Apple TV, this can quickly go to the next level. Let me show you some shortcuts I recently created for controlling our TV. So I'm here in the shortcuts app on my iPad mini and I'm on a particular folder that I have dedicated to this iPad mini and some shortcuts I've set up to control the TV because commonly I'll find myself with this device on the couch reading something or doing something and I want to control the television as well. One of the simple shortcuts you can always do if you have a HomeKit enabled TV is just setting the television to off. So this will go through HomeKit and tell the TV to turn off. You can of course ask a HomePod to do this any number of different ways you can control a HomeKit accessory but it is kind of nice to use a shortcut and just put a button just like an app on your home screen of your iPad that you can touch to turn off your TV. Now, another single action shortcut that can be handy is that uh, Apple in recent versions of iOS has gotten rid of the concept of there being a remote app and you always have the remote inside of control center that you can get to to control an Apple TV or a HomeKit TV and you can use a one action shortcut to pull up that remote and then you could add that as a home screen icon. I've already actually done that. So I'm back out here in my home screen for my home management stuff on my iPad mini and I can tap TV remote and it will bring up the remote for my basement Apple TV. And I can select here between different Apple TVs I have in my home as well as my home kit television itself. Now you can imagine that these things can get pretty powerful when you chain them together. And on top of that, Shortcuts has actions that you can use to control an Apple TV if if that's what you're specifically wanting to use. So I have an option here for watching Prime Video. It's one of the apps that we use to stream on our Apple TV. And so this will turn on the television, set it to the proper input for the uh, Apple TV. So it sets it to the Apple TV input. And then from there, it's gonna go ahead and show the remote for my basement Apple TV, so that specific Apple TV on my screen. But before it does that, it's gonna do an action we haven't talked about yet, which is opening the Prime Video app on my Apple TV. So you can use this action in shortcuts to actually select between the different apps you have installed on your Apple TV and choose one you want it to launch on that particular Apple TV. And then also I have my shortcut here asking me a question of dim the lights question mark. And then if I say yes, then it will continue with the shortcut and set a TV time scene, which dims the lights here. Because depending on what I'm doing in front of the TV, maybe I want the lights dim, maybe I don't. So uh, that's a nice option you can throw into shortcuts. Something that's a little trickier to do otherwise with home automation is something I really like with shortcuts is this integration between these shortcut specific actions to control an Apple TV, as well as all these HomeKit integrations, and with the fact that on iOS, you can turn your iOS device, your iPad or iPhone, 
into an Apple TV remote. So when I want to run this, I can just run it here as an example and it'll turn on the television and then it'll ask me, do I want to dim the lights? In this case, no, because I have a video going. So I'm going to hit cancel and I have the TV remote here and I can go ahead and control that specific app right here on my Apple TV. Now, one of the downsides with this is that the shortcut kind of has to be set up for a specific Apple TV. You can ask it when it runs, which you know Apple TV you want it to use for any of the given steps, uh, but that could get a little slow or confusing, especially if you have a number of Apple TVs. So you might have to set up different shortcuts for different TVs. And then in this case also, um, you know, different apps you might have on your Apple TV. You could create a menu inside of the shortcut to do multiple apps, or you could do something like setting up different shortcuts that then just launch the same thing. And then with that, you just duplicate this shortcut and then change which particular app it launches on your Apple TV. Now, I wouldn't say these automations are bulletproof, but what is when you're fiddling with a bunch of AV equipment? Our last option is a little bit of a cross between software and voice command, but it's often the best because it's always with you, and that's the Apple Watch. Apple clearly spent a lot of time redoing their home app for watchOS 8, but it's mostly a waste of time in my opinion, unless you have a no other option. The killer feature for the Apple Watch is long pressing on the digital crown and talking to Siri to control your home. I've turned off other ways to trigger Siri by voice on the Apple Watch so it doesn't interfere with nearby HomePods. While Siri might sound a little passive aggressive about not hearing back from some of your home accessories, your accessory is taking a while to respond. The requests go through plenty fast enough in my experience. Certain actions like unlocking a door or opening a garage door are considered secure requests in HomeKit. You can't just ask a HomePod to do them, but because your Apple Watch is unlocked and on your wrist, you can run them without continuing on your iPhone first. Now, there is another niche option you might be wondering why I'm not covering, and, and that's Viz Designer for HomeKit. Now, I've played with this a little bit, but I just think it's too complicated for more than a few specialized people who want controls in just a certain way and special macros and sliders. And most of the designs that I see this app produce don't look that good to me. I'm going to sit this trend out, and I think maybe you should too, unless you just know that app is for you. But wait, there's more. Back to the shared iPad for a home control, some people go as far as wall mounting an iPad like this onto a wall. Apple accessory maker Alago makes a very affordable option I reviewed a long time ago on this channel. And on the other hand, you can quickly get into spending hundreds of dollars on a mount like this. Now, in my opinion, it's often not worth it. I ended up tearing down my wall-mounted iPad because I was the only one that actually used it mounted to the wall, and I didn't like it taking up space in our kitchen. If you're looking for a quick way to control HomeKit and shortcuts on your Mac, I recently made a video on how I do that with my Stream Deck. It should be linked somewhere here on the screen. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss all my exciting new videos on Apple smart home tech. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.